pray, God, we thank you that we call to remember and all that honour all those who died in battle. Holy Spirit, have free reign in this place today as we remember what Jesus has done on the cross, saving us even though we were sinners and setting us free. Let us be people that remember you always through our day and our week. Help us to remember your word. Help us to remember and recall all the good things you have done. Also help us to remember one another in prayer. Let us be people who remember your goodness, God, and come back to give thanks for that goodness. Help us to be people who remember how good and gracious you are. We love you, God. Have your way today. Touch hearts, change lives, and speak through your people for your glory. Amen. So can we all be upstanding?
you, Jesus, so much that you are reigning and ruling right now. You are high and above, Lord. And in, in the challenges and the difficulties that we face, when we make you the boss of our lives, we can place our eyes upon you, King of kings and Lord of lords, knowing, Lord Jesus, that you reign and you rule in all circumstances and that, Lord Jesus, you never change. You say yesterday, today, and forever. And we thank you because you are good and faithful. Amen. Praise God. Do you want to take your seats, guys? Thank you, Gareth. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Catherine. Well, it's great to be together this morning. My name is Jez, and I'm one of the leaders here at Love Caffili Family Church. It is so good to have you with us. Uh, I think the furthest people to travel this morning are my friends Gareth and Amy and little Charlotte who come all the way from York today to be with us. Fantastic. Now then, before I talk to you children and maybe some of you adults this morning, we're going to play a quick game, okay? It's a game that my mum taught me when I was a little boy and I used to love it. What she used to do is she used to bring out a tray of different items, okay? Lots of different things, right? And then she used to put a tea towel on top of the tray. Remember this game, anyone? And you had to try and remember. Everyone say remember. Yeah. Had to try and remember all the things that were on the tray. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put a few things on the screen right now. You guys have got about 30 seconds, okay, to try and remember all the things that are on the screen. I was going to bring prizes, but you know what? I forgot. I didn't remember. Okay? I didn't remember. So, the prize for this is just the joy of winning. Okay? Kids, you don't understand that. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, we're going to put uh, a few things on the screen. You've got about 30 seconds, children and adults, to try and remember all the things on the screen. And then we're going to be going around to see who can remember those things. And you know what, guys? I also forgot, I didn't remember, to write them down, okay? So, I, I, it's a game for me as well. So we'll just see how, we'll just, we'll work this together, okay? We'll see how we get on. Okay, you ready, Stu? Fantastic, let's see. You've got 30 seconds. Get thinking, get looking. No, we're not gonna have the phone scale and cheeky chat. Oh, that's for me. Oh, thank you, oh, that's for you. Cheers. Oh, brilliant. Oh, awesome. Okay, okay. Gotta try and remember. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, right then. Thank you, Caleb. I thought you were just trying to cheat the game, so you were helping. Should have thought better of you. Okay then, who can tell me? Put your hand up, don't shout out. Who can tell me one thing, okay? And that is it. Give yourselves a round of applause. Now, thank you, Caleb. Now then, guys, I'm going to let you into a little secret this morning, okay? I'm going to let you into a little secret this morning. But I don't want you to tell anybody, okay? So this is our little secret, okay? Even though it's going on Facebook, maybe it's our little secret, okay? And the secret is this, is that sometimes I can forget things. Sometimes I forget things. You know what? Sometimes I forget where I put my keys. Does anyone else struggle with that? Sometimes I forget where I put my keys. Now, this one may be a male thing or a husband thing, I don't know. But sometimes when Kate gives me jobs to do, my wife, sometimes, occasionally, I forget. So this week she told me to pick up some dishwasher tablets and uh, I forgot and then she told me again when I went out and I think I forgot again, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. So, so any other men relate to that or are you just going to leave me here standing by myself? <laughs> and uh, kids, uh, at home we've got two little cats uh, called Simba and Nala. And uh, when we had kids they kind of got banished but they're still there. And sometimes... I forget to, now this is, this is me really opening up, okay? I forget to feed the cats sometimes, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm just being real with you. But you know what? There are some things that I will never forget. Now we want to have lots of response for this next photo because I'll never forget the day that I married Kate, okay? There. And I know what you're all thinking. 
you have been thinking to yourself, how did he buy her? I have no idea at all. The other thing that I'll never forget is when Joshua, who's sitting at the back there, and Emily were born. I'll never forget when Joshua was born. And there's one other thing, Jess, my sister, hold your hand. There's one other thing. I'll never forget that Jesus died on the cross for me and came back alive three days later. There are three things I'll never forget. I'll never forget that Mary Kate, I'll never forget that when Joshua was born, and I'll never forget when Jesus died on the cross for me. And today, you may see a few people wearing poppies, okay? You may see a few people wearing poppies. Two simple things we remember. Firstly, of the guys that died for us so that we could live in freedom this morning. And secondly, to be thankful for all the things that we have. And those are the two things that I want you to remember today. Now kids, I need you to do something really special for me for the next kind of 15 minutes or so. Because we're going to hand out uh, some colouring in. And what I want you guys to do is just sit on the floor and be as quiet as you can and just do some colouring in. We're going to watch the moment. It is a privilege to have you here today. Tom is a great friend of mine. We've been friends for a long time. We like to take regular walks up Caffili Mountain and talk about the things of God. And it is great to have you here this morning. Can we welcome Tom, please? me to share with you as a church today that relates remembrance. And what God's saying is, is, is that this church in Caerphilly is called, it's courageous, and it's a community, which bears absolute hallmarks and resemblance to what any army want, any, any army is. Of course, we'll stick with the UK army today, but it's any army. Called, courageous, community. Got your Bibles, would you turn to Romans 8 28, please? Romans 8 28 says this, and we know that beyond doubt, beyond doubt, in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purposes. Now, many soldiers, when they go off to fight, often didn't really want to go off to fight, but they've been called according to a greater purpose. So soldiers have to put a brave face on things and get on with it. How much more who have been called according to God's purposes? It shouldn't just be about having a brave face. We know the commander. We know that we're on a, in a victorious army. The outcome's never in doubt. And so we, if we know this beyond doubt, we can choose to be joyful. Sometimes that how we feel can be determined by what we choose. Fact all the time. Ultimately it can be. So it's to encourage you, to encourage us, to not just put on the great, the brave Christian face, but to allow the joy that's within us to well up. Because that's our inheritance from God. So we don't have to stoically endure, but call to enjoy life. People aren't going to come and join us if we're miserable. <laughs> it's very simple. We have this, used to sing a stupid song to my children when they were sulking. If you're happy and you know it, tell your face. If you're happy and you know it, tell your face. And um, it's actually just as relevant today. I can, I can, I can pout with the best of them. Ask my wife. And um, and so we have to remind each other. Come on, it's not that bad. And we're set against the tragedy of what war is like, the absolute misery. I um I found always my soldiers, many of whom, and all of whom, weren't Christians always manage to find something cheerful, some sense of the ridiculous, something to laugh at, something to keep themselves going, to get, get morale going. And how much more can we? How much more should we? Because they were aware of the, the calling, they were called together. And as Christians, we know we've been called together. So I just want to remind us of that. Next one I want us to look at is Hebrews 12, 2. Hebrews 12, 2. I'll start 
a little bit before the, the verse, and it says this. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the love, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Very, very salty verse that. Firstly, it's about fixing our eyes on something, someone other than ourselves. Not, not something we do culturally, we're obsessed with ourselves. And actually, as soldiers, you've all, you, can't, you can't look at yourself. You've got to listen to what you're told. You've got to look out on the left and the right of the people around you and get on with it. And a bit like the Christian walk, really. And it's, it's a, God knew, knew about us when he gave us the word. He knew that we could grow weary and we could lose heart. But we don't have to. We don't have to. And very often that's a choice. So just to encourage us to keep, in the right sense, keep going, bash on, keep your chin up, get on with it. And that's not a, that's not a harsh thing, you know, like the Sergeant Major screaming at you. Because I know I've had Sergeant Majors screaming at me. Then I became an officer and I could tell the Sergeant Major stop her, it's screaming, it's great. Um, but the, but God's not a Sergeant Major. He's not a horror, he's not a awful, stern disciplinarian. Would you worship a God like that? I wouldn't. It's good, isn't it? Because he's not like that. He's a loving father, but he doesn't cut us the slack we don't deserve. He's gracious, but he does expect us to get on with it. Why? Because he's taken that resonance inside each and every one of us. So we all have the same resurrection power at work in us that brought Jesus up from the dead. We've got to keep remembering that. We've got to keep remembering that. So we're courageous. That's what I want us to, to remember. Now I know Winston Churchill is always a dodgy source in, in Wales to quote, but well, this is a one day I can probably get away with it. And Winston Churchill was once asked, what's the greatest virtue? The question really, what is the greatest virtue? And he said this, he thought for a moment, and he said, courage. Why is that? That's the person. He said, if someone's got courage, then all other virtues are possible. It's actually a pretty good answer. It's one of those, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. Um, but he's absolutely right. Now, courage, is for, the word is from courage, of the heart. So it's very much speaking about being brave within. And you think, and the world teaches us to look within ourselves. Well, great, but actually, if we look within ourselves, we find Jesus already there. So we've got courage. And if we've got courage, the impossible becomes possible. Whatever challenges we are facing, and my goodness, I have no idea the challenges that maybe you guys are facing. But in Christ, all things are possible. So we've got to walk that out. But remember, that's who you are. It's not something we strive to become. My wife would be appalled at this, but I'm sure she can go with it. I've got to do it, I've got to do it. Courageous, courageous. Um, but, it's, but courageous is who we are. It's not something we strive to become. We have that. We have all the attributes of God at our disposal. So it's a choice, not something we strain for. Just please remember that. And last but not least of the three of the three C's. So if you got if you had a if you had a sailor talking to you today, you'd have the seven C's, but you haven't. You've got an army guy, so it's just three, so that's all right. Otherwise we'd be here some mid day. Um, community. And one of the great strengths of the British Army, one thing I heard it heard it said, is that many people like this, many nations think their their soldiers are braver than other nations. And that's a moot point, we can discuss that forever. But somebody said this about the, the British Army. He said, no other army has the, the soldier got the same confidence of the courage of the soldier standing next to them. Think about that. That, in effect, your, your mate has got your back. Absolute, unshakable confidence of the, your, your mate having your back. Isn't that a hallmark of the church that God is building? The unshakable confidence of your mate has got your back. Your friend, your brother, your sister in Christ 
has your back. That has massive ram ramifications, good ramifications. Don't gossip, you talk each other up, don't talk each other down. We're there for each other when it, when it matters. And in fact, it's almost, I remember when I was um, uh, courting Liz and thinking, is she the one for me? Is she the one for me? Oh, Lord, you know. And of course, I struggled. No. <laughs> it, it was very easy. And one of the things that God, I am um, showing how old we are. Um, Titanic was the film uh, on, the, um, on the screens at the time. And you know what? God really spoke to me through that, through that film. Because the question was, would I get off the life raft for Liz? The answer was, and is, and will be, yes. And that's about, and clearly for husbands, your life for your wife. And, you know, we'll come to that quote later about greater love of no man. He laid down his life for his friend. But isn't that how we're to live as well? Preferring others before ourselves. It's not always dramatic sacrifice. It might be, <laughs> you don't, you know, you don't eat the last portion of chips. <laughs> something, something as simple as that. But it's these little things that lead to great things. And if we lose the day of small beginnings, we've missed it. The army is team, and so are we. And any army has got different strengths, different, you know, different weaknesses. Not everyone in the army drives a tank. Not everyone in the army builds a bridge. And if you've seen some of mine, you'd be very relieved. Um, the, but the army does fight together. So the tank guys in tanks know that there's going to be guys with big guns and guys with little guns beside them and some of the operation in the radio. And it's just so in a church. The sum of many parts. Different people, different strengths. Sometimes those really irritating people in the barracks when you're, when you're not going anywhere can cause you a lot of problems. And then you go somewhere dangerous and they're the tough people who keep everyone else's morale up. So it's, it's vital that we recognize the strengths on, and the weaknesses of people and realize actually God's designed us to be together. God exists in community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So do we. In church, marriage, wars are never won by individual action. It's always what's the best team. Best team wins every time. Sports field, battlefield, church, it's the same thing. Best team wins. We've got Christ, we've got Christ in us, therefore we are the best team. And that's fact. It's not, not happy homily, it's true. Because God's decreed it. End of. Most of the time. So, I think it's about time for our 15 minute silence. Minutes on. Now that would be a miracle in this church. That would be a miracle. So I think we're about right for our two minutes time. So what I'm going to do, I'll I'll sort of set the clock and all that. No problem with um, with the with the kids if they make any noise. That's that's not a problem. Those soldiers who went off to war went off to war for your kids as well as ourselves. So let's not be religious about it. But as adults, as much as we are able, you know, you know, set set the time. Uh, we'll bow our heads. And whether you want to pray, whether you've got military connections, you just want to remember, um, it's entirely with you. But when we've, um, when we've finished, um, I'll hand back over to, hand back over to Jess, and that will, that will be us. So, let's bow our heads. If you want to stand, that's fine. If you want to remain seated, that's fine. Whatever works.
We'll see you next week. Have a great afternoon. God bless you.